Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Ask Rose number two. And today we're going to be talking about the seven emotional triggers. What is an emotional trigger, you might ask? An emotional trigger is a response to a person, situation, event, dialogue, reading, film, basically anything that provokes a strong emotional reaction. Often we are unaware of our triggers and we fall into reacting prior to sifting through our strong emotional responses. All right, first of all, I want to say I have a degree in psychology, a bachelor's in psychology, and I'm still learning, but this is one of the most interesting, very interesting subjects for me. And um, I'll probably do a lot more of these if y'all like this one. So, all right, so... Um, here are some, some key strategies to handling challenges that come to us from people, events, and circumstances. Seven tools to help us handle our responses. Without them, we're at the mercy of our emotional triggers. I hope to give you in this program some tools to help you to deal with life with grace and effectiveness. Okay, here we go, y'all ready? Number one, name the trigger. Name the trigger. When you recognize that you're responding in the same way to any circumstance, that is a trigger. That's what it's called, it's a trigger. If you name it, you can handle it better. Okay? For example, issues of abandonment, betrayal, feelings of self-worth. Maybe someone said something to you or did something to you that triggered these old emotions within you that you've had since childhood or even early adult life. We all um, have traumas that happen to us, some severe, some, some not, but all of them affect us deeply in some way. And they come up in other ways if we don't handle them and um, acknowledge them, face them, and heal them. So that's what I'm hoping to do with you today. So, you got to take each situation and analyze it, okay? You name that trigger and then you take each situation and analyze it. What is the common denominator to your emotional triggers, okay? Once you've figured this out, you can say to yourself, this is just one of my many triggers, so let me be careful not to overreact, but instead handle it differently this time, right? So, um, give you an example. Someone is screaming at you. Usually that has more to do with the other person, not you, by the way. They're angry about something. May not even be at you, but they're screaming at you. Okay? Maybe this triggers a response in you because your mother, aunt, parent, some, somebody close to you screamed at you a lot, and there was a lot of screaming in the house, and and that made you fearful. So now, as an adult, when somebody screams at you, that same fear comes back to you and you respond in a negative way because you're an adult now and you know you can respond, right? But you respond negatively. So you gotta name that trigger and analyze it, right? Number two, write notes about the trigger. Um, journaling is a great way to get out what happened and how you reacted to it. You can even go so far as back as your childhood and write out the situation that just triggered you and write out what happened to you as a child, right, that, that is similar to that situation. As Shakespeare said, know thyself. If you know yourself, you know what your triggers are, and you know how to respond to them correctly. Okay. Contrary to what you might believe, screaming, becoming violent, or just being abusive with your language indicates that you have an emotional trigger. These are not healthy ways to live your life, and no one else wants to be around anyone who does this. Okay. Side note. If you are in a situation where someone is always screaming at you or abusive to you in their language, either physically or with the words, you need to get out. It's unacceptable. 
Now, I understand it's hard to leave people we love. I get that so, so much. I get it, okay? If, if you talk to this person and tell them, I don't like the way you're treating me, um, this is your warning, and if they continue to do so without changing or wanting to change, then you just need to get out, okay? I'm going to lift up the coffee on that. Okay, back to that. Being around people that do that, and nobody wants to be, right? Okay, so if you are the person doing this, accept that you have an emotional trigger, okay? Journal it, and you can figure out why. Write in your journal, this is what happened, this is how I reacted, next time I can expect this might happen again, but next time I can react differently, okay? Then figure out how you could have handled the situation differently. Example, deep breaths, calming yourself, walking away till you are calm. Yeah, that's certain. a couple of ways you can uh, react differently, okay? Now, third, try to find the source of your emotional trigger. Finding the source of a trigger is a way to heal yourself. Triggers are often lingering traumas that you have suffered either as a child or in your adulthood, early adulthood, okay? These are certain events that caused you anguish, fear, or harm. Think back to a time you experienced a trauma and how you reacted then. This will give you an accurate view of as to why you respond the same way now. This ends the power of the trigger. It allows you to take ownership of the trigger. Then you can heal it and let it go. So it's not enough to recognize that you have to own it. You have to own up to it, okay? Uh, for instance, I have a, an emotional trigger with abandonment. Whenever I feel like someone's going to abandon me, it's an emotional trigger for me, okay? I just let y'all into a little rose psyche. I'm working on it, by the way. I hope you do too. Good coffee. Okay, number four. You are your own worst critic. Okay, you've admitted to your trigger, you've faced your trigger, you've analyzed it, you've figured out what it is, you're trying to figure out how you can react differently next time it happens. My number one advice to you is be kind to yourself, okay? You may have to forgive others, but most of all, you have to forgive yourself, okay? You can do this by changing your inner dialogue. Do you talk to yourself? I do all the time. Instead of, I always fail at this, say, I trust myself to do the best I can to handle what happens in my life. Silence. Your inner, your inner critic. Everybody has it. Do you know we have about 70,000 thoughts a day, 95% of them are negative, and about ourselves? Well, I don't know if the statistics about ourselves are right, but wow, that's pretty significant, right? Okay. Take some time, this is number five, take some time to calm your emotional response. Our emotions are muscles, okay? Just like exercising builds your muscles, your body muscles in a positive way, you can build better emotional responses or emotional muscles, if you will. You lose your objectivity when you're triggered and exaggerate the circumstances. For example, um, alcoholics, people that drink too much, often have uh, emotional triggers while they're drunk, okay? They are extremely exaggerated at that point because they can't calm themselves, find their center. They, it's, it's exaggerated, so, you know, it, it's drama personified is what it is, and also trauma personified. So, You have to take ownership, right? And then you have to find a way to calm yourself. All right, so 
access your inner resource of self-calming patience, then you will not be so strongly triggered when it happens again. Let me say that again, because I, I kind of messed that up. Access your inner resource of self-calming patience. Then you will not be so strongly triggered when it happens again. All right. Number six, and this is a big, big leap of faith, y'all. Share your emotional trigger with a trusted member of your family or a close friend. Okay? Triggers are stronger when we believe we are all the only ones that have them. And baby, everybody has them. You're not alone. Everybody has them. They lose strength when we discuss them openly. So... Find somebody you can trust and talk to them. You know, the other day, da 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 happened, and I responded in this way. And um, I think that might be related to when I was a child, this da 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 happened. And I was fearful, and it was traumatizing. And your friend might say, oh my goodness, I had a similar situation. And you openly discuss this back and forth, and that, that heals it because you're expressing it. An expression is catharsis. Look up the word catharsis. <coughs> okay. Number seven. 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 <laughs> Number seven. Remember that you have resources. Okay. The ideas I've just shared with you, and I will list them in the... Um, comments below the uh these ideas that i can share i shared with you can go a long way in helping you with your emotional triggers remember these ideas and you are on your way to healing and that's what it's all about right right we all want to be functional healthy adults at least i hope we do okay all right also you can contact me via email if you have any questions um you can reach me at or comments, we love comments too. Ask Rose at gmx.com. That's ask Rose at gmx.com. And also let me know what you think about my first two shows here by myself. It's been a, a little awkward without my co host, my prior co host being over here. But um, I think we're going to do okay. This was my second show and I'm a little more comfortable now. So. And I think I'm more comfortable with the subject matter of psychology. So let me know if you want me to do more shows on psychology. Okay? Till we meet again, I appreciate y'all watching. And I hope that you have uh, gotten something helpful out of this. And I hope that it helps change your life. Okay? For the better. Bye now. Rose out. <laughs>